Hey, what's going on everybody? Jay Glees here, and today we're going to get into a beginner-friendly character. I know that I've gotten this question numerous times as to which character is best for a beginning player to learn and execute, get high damage, be able to play neutral rather well, and that character to me is Baraka. Now that's not to say that Baraka is a low-tier character or a bad character. I think he's actually very good. He has a lot of tools is a character that I probably am going to add to my arsenal as well. He fits a lot of what I like to do, but he's just very easy to use. He's going to be a character that's easy for newcomers to kind of understand and get a grasp of. He doesn't have a ton of strings, a ton of buttons, but the things that he does have are excellent. And we're going to go over uh, some of the moves, you know, a game plan with him and some combos. We're going to keep it basic. We're not going to get too crazy as this is going to be a beginner video so stay tuned because we're about to learn baraka your people serve outworld smartly we are not the dogs shao Kahn thinks us i am shamed to have doubted you All right, so when we come up with a game plan for any character, one of the first things we want to talk about and understand is the spacing at which we want to play. So for Baraka, he thrives in this area, out of the range of most characters, but in range of his forward 4-4. Four, four. His forward 4-4 four, four is going to be the staple of this character, as well as the zoning here. All right, so down back one is the uh, projectile. You can meter burn it, send two out. The last one is a mid, so they have to flawless block it in order to reduce chip uh, or just block it normal or try to jump over it after crouching the first one. Not an easy task. I don't even know if it's possible. Honestly, I don't think it is. So they basically have to take that chip uh, or if they jump the first one, they're going to get hit by the second one, which is rather cool for Baraka. Good zoning tools. Now his back two from range uh, is an overhead, splats down, allows for Baraka to get a knockdown. Um, you can get hit out of it, so if you try to back two from range and someone reacts to it, they can stuff you with like a 1-1 one, one, or like a stand four in the cancel. Uh, if you're, you know, scorpion, stand four, teleport, meter burn, you can get full combo punish for it. So keep that in mind. All right, the forward four is going to be, again, his best tool. Now, if someone has a move from range, all right, so for instance, Jade's back one, two has a lot of pushback on it. Um, now, with this pushback, it makes it very hard for a lot of characters to punish it. Baraka, since he has a rather fast forward advancing move, he can punish a lot of things that other characters cannot. All right, And he can also go into full combo with the forward four. So the forward four is cancelable into gutted, which is back forward four. All right, So if you know that you can punish something, you can go into meter burn gutted and you can go in the combo, but hopefully you don't drop it like I just did. But we're going to go over the basic combo uh, with Baraka off of the forward four punish. So we go into gutted, late jump one, and then forward four into gutted again. All right, that's going to keep the spacing rather far away. All right, so now I can zone if I'm playing a character that wants to get in. So say I'm playing like Jax or... Uh, you know, well, Sonya can zone, so I don't know. It depends on the character and who you're facing, I guess, with Sonya. But if, you, if you're facing a character like Sub-Zero, all right, that wants to be in, you want to end and gut it, all right? So your ender is going to change based off of the character that you're playing against and the way that your opponent likes to play. If you want that far spacing, end and gut it. If you don't, end in down back three, which is the chop chop. All right, and you're going to chop, chop, chop them, and they're going to wind up right next to you. So then you can enforce your pressure as they're sitting, you know, right next to you on wake up. And that's what it looks like right here. You can meter burn it if you would like, but now notice the spacing. He's right next to me. 
And if I want him right next to me, that's what I'm going to end with. So you have two different enders again. It's either ended and gutted, all right, and get that far spacing, or end it in the chop chop and keep him right next to you. And you can meter burn the chop chop, just so you know. So we're going to talk about close range punishers. Now his 1-1 one, one is a great punisher, all right, but he also has the 1-2-2, two, two, which does crushing blow. All right, and we're going to take a look at what the combo looks like for that, and it's basically a rinse and repeat. That's it. Boom. Ooh, cheeky, right? Now, what if I want to end it far away? What do we do? Oh, we just end and gutted. A little less damage, but we got the optimal spacing for certain matchups. All right, so we got that all under control. Easy, so easy. Also keep in mind that Gutted does crushing blow in combos of nine hits or more. So you can utilize that at the end of your combo. Oh, and the forward 4-4 four, four also crushing blows on counter hit and punish. So that's the very basics of Baraka as far as his punishes go, as far as the neutral goes. And again, if you don't have the crushing blow available, you can just go into the gutted on a confirm. All right, and it looks just like that. All right, send him back out. Work your way in. All right, this is the way this character works. He's a very good character with all of these uh, very simple yet effective tools. Now we're gonna go over a couple of his other strings and his pokes that are going to allow you to be advantageous. So we're gonna take a look at some of his strings. Now the forward 212 is plus one. It has a decent amount of pushback, but it does have a gap, so keep that in mind. All right, so right now I have Baraka recorded to do the forward 212, which does have a gap, but it is plus one, and he's going to follow up immediately with the holding down forward in one, which is the extension on his downward poke. Now it is plus one, the down forward one is seven frames, so essentially it comes out in six frames, if you take the difference between the numbers. Now, if an opponent tries to push a button, they're going to get stuffed out, all right, in most cases, because most down ones are not going to be able to contest with six frames. You'll either trade or you'll win. Now, there is a caveat to this. Now, if I try to go down three, it'll actually go under it. All right, so it low profiles that move. Even though my down three isn't necessarily faster, it's just going under. So keep that in mind. If someone has a far-reaching down three like Kotal Khan, all right, he's going to go under. But his frames have to be pretty good. Notice I have to be pretty good as, uh, as far as hitting that button. If I hit it a little bit late, I'm getting poked. All right, so you have to get pretty quick and be under that. But there's also a way to flawless block it. All right, so you can flawless block that on the last hit. So keep that in mind also. And you can get a full combo punish off of it. All right, so the forward 2-1-2 does come with risks. Sets some things up, but it does come with risks. So you also have the stand 2, 1 plus 3, which is plus 1. It does keep you closer to the opponent, so then we can use the down 3. Don't have to worry about low profiling. That comes out in 7 frames with the plus one block advantage. So we're at six frames on the down three, which allows you some really good things. And on hit, the down three, his best poke is 14 hits of advantage, meaning that you can go into many things off of that as the hit advantage is so good. So the down three is going to be the best poke. We're gonna take a look at the two, one plus three. I'm going to set him to record. So notice I get beat out every time. Try to down one, I can't. Can't down one. I can't do it. Can I back up? I can't back up. Can I down three? I can't down three. Can I shore hop? I can't shore hop. 
Oh, I can jump. I can just jump. But then that leaves me open to so many things if your opponent's jumping. But the one thing you can do is flawless block that and punish it. So keep that in mind as well. All of his plus strings are able to be flawless blocked. So keep that in mind. So just to further illustrate the importance of the down three poke and the hit advantage, I cannot poke out of any of these strings, even when they're highs. So if you get hit with that down three, the frame advantage is so much that even like a stand one or any of his high strings will uh, force the opponent to have to block. Like I'm trying to down two. I can't down two. I'm going to try to down one. I can't down one. I'm going to try to down four. I can't down four. There's nothing that I can do after that hit. Even if I try to jump, I'm jailed into the string. All right, so you, you can't get out of it. That's why his down three is so good. There aren't a lot of characters that have um, that type of hit advantage on their pokes. And that's one of the big things with Baraka, or at least, you know, that I see. That's one of the most... Uh, awesome things about Baraka is that he has a poke that is seven frames and one hit jails into like everything that he has. All right, so you're not going to get those opponents that are like mashing that down too, like you oftentimes get uh, with other characters that don't have pokes that necessarily jail into a lot of things. So keep that in mind with Baraka. That's a huge advantage for him uh, in this game. Baraka does a great job with that. All right, so the next thing we're going to talk about are anti-airs. Notice the down two. Notice the blades go over his head. Keeps Baraka safe. Allows for a very consistent anti-air. The stand four also allows for a rather good anti-air. Not as consistent as the down two, as you see right there. But it is really consistent. And the benefit of the stand four is the fact that you can get a full combo off of it. And that is why it's so good. And it's almost 40% damage for one bar. It's straight sick. All right, so keep that in mind if you want to take that little bit of a, a you know, greater risk, which isn't a huge risk in my opinion. I will be going for the stand four in a lot of cases. All right, because if I can get that 40% damage basically off of that, uh, it's definitely worth it to me. All right, worth the risk to me. But you got to get good at it. You got to know your ranges and you got to know the jump ins of your opponents. But again, consistency, the down two, one of the best anti-airs in the game. All right, so last but not least, we're going to take a look at how to link the Fatal Blow in combo. Now, we're just going to do all the same stuff that we've been doing, except at the end, we're just going to go forward four, and instead of canceling into the gutted, we're going to go right into the Fatal Blow, and we're in there like swimwear, and we're good. Bong, 45%. Styling on him at Baraka range. Let's go. All right, so very good uh, Fatal blow puts him at a good range and that's basically how the character works Now if you have any questions leave them down in the comment section below I'll be happy to answer them again. I think Baraka is a Excellent character. He's an excellent character. He's easy for beginners, but that doesn't mean that he's a bad character I think that the way that he's utilized and his tools in this game Make him a very, very strong character. But that's just my opinion. All right, what's yours? Leave it down in the comment section below. Also, if you have any questions, again, like I said, uh, make sure that you comment down below and let me know. If you're new, definitely click that subscribe button and make sure you click the bell so you get updated whenever I post new content. So that's it. It's Jay Glee signing out. Thanks for checking in and continue to game strong.